this is a amorphous metal have a it's a transparent material because as i said like each molecule have a very broader space between the molecules so easily the because of the space the its spaces it allows lights to transmit to the molecule that's why you can see the polycarbonate so mostly we are using our spectacles polycarbonate and polyethylene methacrylate it's a pmma so the mostly the pmma using for uh, tough glasses like aircraft or uh, helicopter or uh, even some buses also they are using so this kind of uh, material have a highly transparent because of this nature come to the shrinkage point of view so this is not orderly arranged because of the random arrangement so the shrinkage is it's little uh, tough to predict but both x and y direction the shrinkage will be very low and again so this shrinkage is it's uh, depends on uh, the temperature and pressure and type of cooling and uh, type of material we are using for uh, for the tool so it's all related to this uh, shrinkages but in the overall way compared to the crystalline material the amorphous metal is having a very low shrinkage other properties it's kind of it's having very low chemical resistance because it's having each material have a big gap so easily allows the material penetrate in deeper and deeper it will go and distract the bond between the molecule so it will easily destroy and it's having very poor fatigue because it cannot load because uh, you can say it's like if you take a, uh, the crystalline metal how it's like our rope it ties all the chains are ties very tightly so if you are applying a load it will bash like anything but here it's very loosely packed so while applying load it will directly the load will be directly go and cut first yarn and second yarn third yarn it's it easily break so it's tough to bear the stress so sometimes uh, the people will, will use kind of a blending like alloying material between like uh, pc metal uh, blended with the abs or a pc metal blended with the pbt material so it's kind of a alloy will that is just for uh, introduction purpose or understanding purpose i'm saying and these are the materials like polycarbonate and polymethyl methacrylate and polyvinyl chloride and polystyrene <clears throat> these are the materials for amorphous so pc metal they are using for uh, uh, cd and spectacles and for our uh, rear uh, light and our mobile phone glasses these are just overview like how the uh, just crystalline metal versus amorphous uh, based on application wise so thermal parameter so Uh, the amorphous metal will be will like a tg like a glass transition temperature like you people know so i don't need to explain or it's it's like a phase change like from uh, molten stage to uh, the uh, uh, like a uh, more uh, solid state that is a state so this will be stay in the the temperature range of glass transition temperature but crystalline metal still it's uh, sustain below the uh, melt temperature for the application point of view and mechanical property amorphous is all uh, it's already known it's poor compared to the crystalline and chemical properties also poor and electrical property yes this is good and this is uh, this is completely it's better and adding fill is so uh, here it's uh, another point like because many people they are going to add, they are adding material for uh, strength as well as reducing the cost so like if you are adding a glass fibers it will add more strength because the fillers having a, a active filler and the inactive filler so if you are adding a glass fiber it's active filler because it's allowing to add more strength and uh, uh, more tensile modulus but come to the kind of uh, uh, talc or any kind of a filler that is a inactive filler that is just for adding a, a volume wise just for reducing the raw material adding more fillers that is the one so for amorphous metal we can add more fillers because it's having more space and crystalline it, it's very less we can add the fillers coming to the processing point of view so the processing means so injection molding i'll explain the uh, the machine later so the processing means the metal will be just uh, put into the barrel it's it's allowed to melt and it will injection it injection to the cavity it forms the part and it will eject that is a processing so here the metal is for compared to the amorphous the metal is very it's easy flow material and it will low it's a low viscous and come to the crystalline it's a tough flow but this is a generic view because even amorphous metal also like if i take it as a polymethyl methacrylate it's a high viscous material it will not easily flow this is in a generic view or if you take a 100 percentage so 80 85 percentage of the amorphous metal is are very easy flow coming to the crystalline yes it's tough flow and solidification so cooling is below tg so it needs 
the metal should be reaches below the tg so because the mold flow database have each metal have a tg value so we need to look at the tg value while while optimizing the part so this is we need to know that so we need to know the is it, if it is a amorphous metal we should keep the part should be cool below the tg ejecting the part and coming to the crystalline it's we can uh, it's a crystallization below the melting temperature it's okay the crystallization part is different like it's it's a unique part so i'm just taking it as a it's a solidification coming to the hold pressure so it's a hold pressure means like uh, i will i will explain later the processing because it's a it's a vast area this is like uh, while injecting the part so after injecting the part we will keep it in uh, the part in a, in a closed condition with the some pressure for cooling so that is the hold pressure so for amorphous metal it's decreased during a cooling time so it's it it no needs to hold much amorphous material but crystalline metal we need to reduce the hold pressure in a very it's a lagged way so no need to just suddenly drop that pressure we should drop it very slowly and while flow through the gate so this is again it's a processing like while filling the part it's a kind of a dynamic filling so the while filling we can fill the material in a different flow rate that's what they are saying in the dynamic filling come to the crystalline it continues to fill until the it the crystallization so if you are giving a sudden cooling also it it continuously fills that part we'll see this uh, things in the later parts later session defects is the bad process so like sometimes if you are uh, over packing the part so it's having a more stress if you see many glass parts if you see it in a, in a light you can see that there is a, there is a kind of a, a rainbow colors you can see in a transparent part that is called it's a internal stress in the part that's where it's stress if you just drop the part in you know, 1 feet or 2 feet it it will be easily crack because of the internal stress and crystallines mostly it will create a uh, voids and sink mark you can see in the many of you you guys have a chairs in your home you can see the depression you can see in the under the ribs you can see the uh, sink mark in the part or any plastic boxes with the ribs inside you can see the sink mark so that defects mostly comes in crystalline material and the th the last one is a pvt it's a pressure volume temperature this is where the graph will be so this i will cover in the later uh, session uh, come to the part design so come to the uniform wall thickness so amorphous metal it less required so no need to keep all the feature in a uh, same wall thickness for the amorphous material but crystalline it's definitely it's required because it's it creates lot of problem uh, if the part is not having a even wall thickness and sink mark and voids these are defects so amorphous metal it's having a less possibility and crystalline have a more uh, possibilities so the defects i covered in the later slides we can see that and warpage yeah it's a warpage is the biggest problem for the plastic parts the warpage it's due to the internal stress it creates each because Uh, internal stress as well as the temperature difference because the cold will create a, a compression stress and hot will create a tensile stress because of the difference in temperature inside the part it creates difference in the, uh, uh, the compression and tensile so it creates what will deflect in above the xy z direction and crystalline part differences in parallel and perpendicular direction dimensional stability yeah the amorphous metal have a good and crystalline is poor so it needs more optimization and post shrinkage it's post shrinkage means suppose the part is already manufactured so today i manufacture the part i just put it in a room temperature for 3 4 days it will continuously shrink the because the the metal is expanded because of the uh, temperature and pressure it will because of the uh, atmospheric pressure and atmospheric temperature it tries to again shrink shrink continuously shrinks the part so that's where uh, the problem come in crystalline material but not in amorphous material and residual stress it's a less impact and it's more impact in uh, crystalline material because residual stress in amorphous material we can easily uh, avoid because we can just put it in a oven like annealing process if you if you do annealing process the stress will be easily relieved from the amorphous material but crystalline material it's again it's very tough to release the residual stress okay so these are the basic plastic metal i think i covered a lot now i come to the basic product design so it's very basic like what how to keep the wall thickness and how, what are the flow leaders and restrict, uh, restrictors and how to make the ribs and bosses and gussets and why where we need to avoid the sharp corners and drafts and undercuts 
so mostly people know actually i covered in the plan la the material point so we need to keep that uh, whatever the amorphous or uh, the crystalline so better we can keep that even wall thickness that helps to manufacture in the pot very easily and in the tubing pot also it's very easily so that's where so that strongly the key thing is so we need to keep uh, just keep that mechanical performance and the fields of fitting and cosmetic appearance and moldability uh, for even economy if you keep the uh, part is very thicker so again we are losing the material so the part will weight will be goes higher see today's economy i think uh, the trend so they are uh, manufacturing very lightweight cars so so uh, again so if you are keep the material thickness it's in the lower side or an optimal way so it's very useful for uh, the car mileage the final outcome so increasing the wall thickness again we are adding a part weight so again if you are it's a thicker part it's taking more time to solidify again we are losing a time so and the material cost also because each material have a different cost so that's where we are losing that so we have to keep that wall thickness in a optimal way and flow leaders so this is a main uh, uh, feature like some parts having see the first part you can see here so here from here this is a gate point so we are injecting here from here to here the flow length is differing from here to here so there's a different flow length so we have to achieve here also one here also one so that is a main concern here so if you are adding a small thickness in the bottom the b side so the flow will be remain same here also in the same time here also in the same time like adding a small thickness and a small width for adding a thickness to it's just increase the flow or motivate the flow in a faster way to the corners it fills in the same time so that is a main concern here and sometimes we are, the people will use a flow restriction restriction is needed here you can see this part having well because this flow is faster than this flow if you see this part the edge flow is faster than the center flow that's why it's creating a it's a kind of a, like a short filling or a kind of a defects or the strong well lines they will call as a neat lines so it forms here so that's where we are adding some restrictors so these are just removing a, a material from that area just small small uh, features we are adding to avoid so restrict the flow and in the same way same pattern coming to the adding ribs so ribs is it's a very uh, important feature for uh, inject plastic part so adding uh, uh, it's it, it needs to strengthen the part so sometimes there are people are using for locating the other other counter parts or providing alignment for the meeting part or acting as a stopper or guiding mechanism for that purpose let's see how to design that uh, ribs so rib design is it's uh, needs is like a thickness and height location and quantity and moldability yeah the thickness is very important so we have to keep that thickness of the nominal wall thickness the t it's a t is a nominal wall thickness so this is a, so we have to keep that t as a base and we have to maintain a 0.5t it's a 50% of thickness so that is important and height because if you are keeping a height very high so it will not flow easily in the height so the high uh, because while keeping that rib is in a very high level so the metal will not flow in that height because be before reaching the top it will cool the metal or it solidify and where we have to keep that so that is very important so we should keep that uh, ribs in a corner or near to the thick region or just far from the gate so these are the terminology i'll explain in the later uh, classes because it's these are the very uh, major points while designing the plastic parts and quantity of the ribs so based on the part uh, toughness or how much toughness is need or how much strength is needed for the parts so based on that we need to define the quantity and moldability so the moldability means like we need to keep the draft so the draft is very important so i'll explain the later and coming to the bosses so mostly the bosses is used for uh, uh, fastening the counter part like a threaded or any kind of uh, alignment feature so uh, that is where we are using this uh, part so mostly for the fastening purpose we are using so while designing that uh, uh, bosses the bosses will create most of the sink mark issues the a side you can see the part will be little bit sink inside so the visibly you can see some depression or oil feeling just while uh, touching that face you can you can feel there is some kind of depression so we need to avoid that one so we have to keep that uh, area you can see here the design as you can see we are maintaining the even wall thickness here and uh, here you can see there is a chunky metal forming so these are all creating a lot of uh, uh, sink marks so that's why we have to remove this kind of core out we have to make it 
so just keep that wall thickness in a proper way will avoid most of the problems and gussets so gussets is again it's like a ribs added uh, around the bosses that is called as a gusset so these are the designs so we should keep that gussets and should not keep any uh, sharp corners because the sharp corners create the air trap so while filling the material because anyway the cavity have a air so while just forcefully filling the material inside the cavity the hot air will be just try to escape somewhere so if you are keeping a some sharp corner it will go and stay in that area it will just sometimes it will it will acting as a cushion it will not allow the material to fill so at that time it creates some short shot it will not material will not fill full and 100 percentage or sometimes because of the pressure and temperature air will be bust it creates a burn mark we should a little very care about this kind of a uh, design and sharp corners yeah so i think this is many people know so we should keep that uh, adding radius to avoid the constant stress concentration so that is very important for even uh, the plastic part design as well uh, coming to the draft so draft is very important so because the parts are manufacturing in a two a half so whatever the rips is forming towards opening the part so this is how the tool will be this is the maybe i can just split in the cavity like this so uh, it will form in a core so it forms like this so while moving this part it be, while opening the uh, injection molding uh, cavity it will open like that so while opening we have to allow the part will be easily released from the core and cavity so for facilitating purpose we are adding drafts for all perpendicular walls and ribs and whatever the post like a bosses and whatever area we should definitely give the drafts for ease of ejection that is a very important thing for uh, adding drafts and drafts is again depends on the height of the feature and what in the each part have we can see many part have a different kind of texture as well you can see some part have a mirror mirror finished or the polished surface some part you can see a dull finish some part have some kind of a rugged finish like it's kind of very deep texture so that kind of parts need more drafts to release the texture as well as that the matte finish so that it's a deeper things we need to study about the draft Thank you.